Hey there, I'm Bogdan Budaka and welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me for another mind workout. I hope that you're staying indoors and that you keep safe and you keep learning. Today I thought we could have a bit of encryption fun and play around with Caesar's cipher. So uh, let's dig right in. Our mission and what we want to get done is implement a program that encrypts messages using Caesar's cipher. Okay, so this might be one of the oldest and possibly simplest uh, methods of encryption. And it's, be, it's been used by Caesar himself. And of course you can look it up, it's pretty interesting. And it's fairly simple, basically what it does is if you have a letter in the alphabet and you have a key of 2, so for example if we have A and we have a key of 2, we just shift 2 letters down the alphabet, so for example instead of A we would use a C, okay? And if our correspondent has the key, they would basically know to move two positions back, so if the key is 2 and they see a letter C, they will know that, it's, oh, okay, this is an A, okay? So this is, I think this is behind modern computing as well and uh, how encryption works. So this could be a good introduction for that. And um, another thing we have here is a couple of formulas to help us out with Caesar's cipher. So this is for encryption, this is for decryption. So they're fairly simple and um, you, you take the letter to be encrypted, you add on the key and then you use modulo 26. And for decryption, you deduct the key and you, and you use modulo 26 again. Okay. For today we will only focus on encryption, but I've also found a cool little website that helps us out with decrypting, so we can check our work. So, why also one thing, why are we using, why are we using modulo 26? We, we imagine that we have 26 letters in the alphabet, so if we go over, we just want to protect ourselves against that, okay? So for example, what I mean is if we have the letter Z and uh, we have the key of 2, then, we, then our letter should be a B, okay? Z and then we start over A, B, okay? So that's basically it. I already have the formulas over here, ready at hand. We will only be using the encryption one. But yeah, I just had them both here and I have also a few libraries that we will need for our work today. Just to have them at hand. So we can start drafting a small algorithm to work on. So here, how we're going to be running this program is we'll also use a command line argument. So uh, we will we will call the program like dot slash and the program name and then we would have the key that would be our command line argument okay so we want to check that we have a command line argument and then we actually want to check that the command line argument that the key is valid so it's a number that we can actually work with so no letters or special characters or anything like that so check the, the command Oops, sorry about that. If I could actually spell it, the command line argument is a number. And then one step we could squeeze in here is actually because we will be receiving it as a as a char array, so as a string, so to say. So we want to convert the key to an integer. So we can actually use it in our formula. Here we want to request the plain text. The next order of business. Cool. What's next? So after we have the plain text, we actually want to check for upper, upper and lower case letters. So we will only focus on letters, uppercase or lowercase. We will ignore numbers or special characters. We would we would leave those unchanged. So after we make that check, we want to apply the formula, and then we want to output the cipher text. Okay, so this could be our little algorithm in broad lines. So let's get started. Include standard io.h and then we should have our main function. Here I'm going to use argc which is argument count. Actually that's an integer. This will be our argument count and then we have our argument vector, which would be an array of char arrays. So here, the first order of business is check that we have a command line argument. So we can actually check on arc C. So the arc count should be two. There's a small catch here. Uh, the, the argument count is always two if you have one command line argument because uh, the index zero argument is the actual program name, okay? So the index one argument would be our actual key. So we have two uh, two arguments. Okay. So the the count, the count is two. This is this is where we will conduct our work. Else, 
printf and we want to inform of the usage usage teaser key which will be the command line argument line and here we want to return one so we will terminate the program if uh, if we return anything then zero anything but zero the program will end like when for, for example when you see an, a program that has an error and some number that's not zero that's actually terminating the program with that number okay so here we will work we can actually check this and uh, good let me check here i'll put that to a file named caesar and here we run it so no arguments get prompted no arguments prompted and it's good you should have no line here just for looks okay so it's good okay look so we got that done so next check that the command line argument is a number okay so we could actually squeeze in here and key equals to atoi this is a function we can use rv of index one our command line argument our key atoi comes with the standard lib.h library we need to have this in here it also needs a boolean when the standard bool dot h so bool valid e equals to let's initialize that to false i'm repeating myself i'm sorry okay and this is where we will store the validity of our command line of our uh, key of our command line argument so here we can start iterating through the key and by just a regular for loop by less than str len and for str len we'll actually need a string library add that in here str len rv one plus increment i here if is digit so we can use the is digit function and for is digit we will need c type dot h this gives us functions like uh is digit is upper is lower so this will be very handy for us and this digit will be one position i okay in this case we will valid e plus the true so we will pass true to the valid key else if this will be this will be invalid we can actually reuse this okay so we inform of the usage and we and we terminate the program okay so this is for the my argument Convert command convert key actually key to int where we for key validity here we check check the key validity uh validity key of the key look okay. Okay, look. So here we can proceed. Move on to request the plain text, and we will be doing this if valid key is true. We will have a char array of let's say 100. Safe. Here we can use f gets takes in the three arguments. So input. Then size of input, and then it needs within. Okay, actually prompt for it, so we need to go for it. Main text. Here we go. That's cool. Here we can 
loop through it. And i equals to zero, i is less than str len of input, and here i plus plus. So, so here we will basically check for upper and lower for case headers and apply the formula. Okay, so if is upper input of i, so here we will transform so it, no, its input equals to input of i. Actually, we want to minus. One thing here, so if we look at the ASCII table, and we, we would actually want to use the 0 to 26 range, okay? So we can actually work with the formula. And for example, if we have an uppercase, we want to first deduct 65 and then add it back on once we apply the formula, okay? So this would be something like minus 65 plus key. So this would be first operation. Then we would have modulo 26, our second operation. And then we would add 65 back. Okay, so we could actually move back to an ASCII code, to a valid ASCII code letter. Okay, so that's for uppercase. Else if is lower, here we have again input index i here. Can actually copy this down here for this is for lowercase so for lowercase we would need to use 97 okay 97 so i hope this makes sense we just want to move to the 0 to 26 range for the alphabet for the regular alphabet change uh, uh, range and then we change back to the normal ascii code okay by adding 97 back once we apply our formula okay so good, okie doke. So we have this done. And here we want to print f and we have our actually this will be our cipher text. Hopefully, cipher text. And here we would have string. Here we would have okay. So this should be it. Here we would have a UC and terminate the program. Okay. For Okie doke. So let's see if we have everything right. Things to compile. So Caesar, let's go with three. This one I, I kind of know. And then hello. Ah, this one is good. I know that it's good. So let's try something while we can actually don't, don't trust me, just we can check, of course. This the key is three decrypt. We have hello. So now let's try something like I don't know 34. So uh, hello. That out. But in here, 34 decrypt. And we have hello again. So, so let's do something a bit more wild. Five, like hello there. Uh, it's 2020. Okay. So this is what we get. Copy it out. Do oh. that. Put it here. Uh, what was the key? 55. Here, 55 decrypt. <coughs> Sorry about that. Hello there, it's 2020. Uh, got mangled up. Hello there, it's 2020. So that's all good. Okay, so this is pretty much it. And hope it's neat and tidy. And I'll also upload this to GitHub. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, I hope this was as much fun for you as it was for me. And uh, 
course, if you found this interesting in any way, please give the video a like and subscribe. And I'm looking forward for your, to your comments in the section below. And uh, yeah, be safe and uh, I'll see you around.